Welcome. In this lecture, we look at calculus and data. How, what does it, this have to do with calculus? It turns out that data are functions. Physically, in a computer, data are arranged in a long array, which we uh, can access. <clears throat> Here we see inside the memory of a computer, uh, an old computer, there are 128 bytes arranged in an array of 32 times 32 bits. This unit can store a text with 128 characters. In general, high dimensional spatial data are uh, useful, but as in single variable calculus we really like to, the, the one dimensional point of view and that's very useful. We will show this in a few examples. So uh, here are uh, sample data. We took the last 120 years of the Boston temperatures and plotted them and uh, also made a linear fit. So here is how we got the data. So we went to this website and entered the range we want to see and then we got the table and we copy pasted that and put it into Mathematica and got the graph. So this is uh, no problem for weather. Uh, still, kind of, if you are presenting data, it is very important how you do that. Here we see uh, another picture where we kind of have used a different scale. And it doesn't look as dramatic, right? In the previous picture, it was more clear that we have some global warming, and here this is uh, this is uh, not visible. A uh, little riddle: it's zero degrees outside today. Tomorrow it will be twice as cold. How cold will it be? Uh, another example of pictures. So if you look at the picture, pic, picture like here, a 7 times 5 pixel picture, then uh, every pixel has a, a red, green and blue value. And uh, uh, here I also kind of wrote the picture as a file, as a PPM file. And uh, it, this, this file is very simple, has a very simple structure. It just tells first how big the array is, 7 times 5. And then the, the range, 255, that's just one, one byte. And then it gives, in triples, it gives the, the, the color. So 255, 255, 255 is, this is white. This is a white pixel. Then uh, 00, 255 is a blue pixel. Then again, a white pixel. And then uh, three red pixels, etc. You go just linearly through the, through the, through, through the file. <clears throat> And that's what you do when you program with uh, with pictures. You actually do that. You access this uh, this array as a one-dimensional structure. So here we have just changed it thirty-five times one, and now we have kind of this one-dimensional array. That's how physically on a computer the data are organized in registers. You can addresses. So and uh, it can be handy to actually be able to really write every pixel. Uh, here we see a, 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 an example. We see the, the Gaussian primes in the complex plane, and uh, I just wrote this 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 picture here. Every pixel was just really just placed. So this gives me complete control. And there's no kind of fuzziness or anything. So it's really absolutely has contains all the information about this. Uh, uh, here is a, a nice movie we, which I will show them in class, uh, Fermat's Room, uh, where one of the riddles is actually to decode a picture. This is a very nice movie where uh, kind of a few mathematicians are enclosed in a room. It's Fermat's Room, and the room is, in, is, is, is smashed together by presses. And so they have to solve riddles to, 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 uh, to, uh, to stop the presses. Uh, another example is music. So we have uh, uh, already seen this. So we have uh, these are these are one-dimensional data sets, the left and the right. Uh, movies. Uh, when you look at the movie, this is actually just a sequence of pictures. There's also sound to it. So there are different data structures together, with, which then are packed together to one file, uh, like like an MP4 file. So in this case. There are 480 times 854 matrices, each is a 24-bit, meaning three colors, red, green, blue, uh, part, and uh, so these three bytes. 
and uh, so in this case we have 183,000 uh, pictures. This would be large if you would actually kind of save this just as a as data structure itself that's compressed heavily using nice algorithms using Fourier theory. So uh, uh, this is an example we live in a time where data are very important in yeah we are in a, live, live in a pandemic and we uh, but we have, we have we have not much uh, data uh, uh, available. So uh, if you look at uh, the analog thing, the influenza, which is also a virus, there if you look at the data estimates, this is really in a, in, in a wide wider range. So twenty four thousand to sixty two thousand deaths. One doesn't even know uh, for uh, uh, even for for hospitalization, 410,000 to 740,000. One of the reasons is because one doesn't have to report, not all doctors have to report, or not all hospitals have to report these uh, things. And in the case of COVID, it's even even, even worse. So there was a nice talk about, uh, about a week ago, a little bit more of a week ago by Neil Shubin, and he was in the Harvard Bookstore event, and he was talking about viruses also. And uh, so he, here is kind of a, how I watched it, this virtual event from home. There were about uh, uh, almost 900 people there. And uh, he mentioned that there are more viruses on Earth than stars in the, in the visible universe. So uh, still kind of one has a lot of, one fears this, this uh, this subject and uh, 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 reptile brains kick in. So there are people who think that uh, it has come from outer space. All kind of conspiracy theories have come up with uh, uh, that it actually has to do with 5G. Uh, and uh, a, a, a funny thing is that 38% of beer drinking Americans don't drink any more Corona beer <laughs> under no circumstances. <laughs> Really, this is reptile brain. <clears throat> uh, in part B, we quickly look at models. Uh, I will talk about this more in class. So they are kind of a, in population dynamics. There's always the exponential growth first. Uh, that's uh, uh, measured with the R zero uh, number, R naught number, which is the reproduction number, and uh, this measures then how how fast this uh, this is growing. But exponential growth cannot. Uh, you know, it's not sustainable for a long time. Then there is this logistic growth uh, <coughs> in a, for example, if the population is finite, not everybody, everybody is infected, you cannot continue. And uh, uh, also if the resources are finite for some, for some population. So this is, uh, I will talk about this more uh, in, 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 in class. Uh, logistic growth, you actually pretty much see in, like in the textbook, you see in a, uh, in places where data are really available, nicely available, like in Switzerland. Uh, this picture, by the way, is a nice picture I just made yesterday, a couple of, uh, a, a, a movie. Uh, this is uh, rendered in, in Mathematica, this virus, and I just wrote it in Mathematica and, and uh, animated it. So it's a beautiful thing, beautiful uh, creature. <laughs> and uh, in part C, I want to talk about the uh, pitfalls with data, I already mentioned these visualization problems. There are many, many more examples like this shown in that book, How to Live with Statistics, which is a classic book from the 50s. Uh, so this is a textbook example. Uh, a more modern uh, book is uh, Freakonomics. I like it explains here on this page that uh, if, if, if you are if you are giving uh, <coughs> if you are giving money to blood donors. So there are actually less people who come after you give the money. It's very strange how some things uh, uh, work. And for an example in this uh, crisis is that actually hospitals, many hospitals actually have trouble these days because they don't have enough customers. So they <clears throat> and then there is also all of us as more psychological, we are humans, is a bias. <clears throat> so we are all aware of gender, racial, uh, religious, political bias. There's also bias about the institution. If you are a good institution, you have more weight. It's the age uh, bias, title, very important. I will come to this. Or how you look like, how you, how you, how you uh, talk. <clears throat> so a confirmation bias is, has been 
uh, measured in, in experiments like this classical example. The American Association of Medical <laughs> Colleges, he's written in science for those of you who have uh, to start today by getting into the applicability of game theory in the field of medicine and in the field of teaching. The other, we must get him to listen to us. And this cannot usually be done if we ourselves do not listen. is all doctors who have listened to complete nonsense uh, uh, and uh, by an expert. And so they were, they were actually quite, quite uh, impressed by this, uh, by this presentation. And you can see, you can measure that yourself. You can go somewhere and if, you, if it's an overpriced winner, of course you are. You think it's, it's great. And uh, someone has also repeated that experiment more. The outcomes are essentially the same. Uh, here's a funny example from uh, also from, from the current crisis. There is a, a, a guy, Knut Witkowski, who has uh, uh, voiced yeah, some yeah, kind of opinions which are not every uh, which not everybody. I'm not paid by the um, government. I'm not paid by the so government. I, I'm so entitled, I, to, I'm entitled to, to, to actually do science. Uh, if the government uh, had, if the if government there had, been had no if there had been no intervention, the epidemic would have the been epidemic over. would have been over. It reminded me just from a, a Jurassic Park, right? So, uh, 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 <laughs> you know, the, the personality is, is is very similar to uh, uh, to that to that story. Would it be nice to have a vaccine against SARS? Would be nice. Would be nice. Would help? Would it help to create herd immunity a bit faster? Because those who have the vaccine, because those who have the vaccine are already immune, are already immune. Are those who don't, are those who they don't, just need, they just need to be exposed to become, to become immune. immune. I'm just in nature. I'm just in nature. I've, 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 i uh, position at that time. Maybe he will. This uh, this guy will get the, the, the Nobel Prize. But he has bad luck because <clears throat> he has uh, and he's he, he's look he looks like uh, 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 known figures in fiction like Jurassic Park, and uh, that's very hard to overcome. <clears throat> so some follow up. Some people have criticized uh, his his points of view. Rockefeller University has distanced its itself from from him. Uh, but he writes he writes papers and. Uh, <clears throat> So it's quite an interesting point of view. What can we what can we learn from the from the current crisis? So first of all, data are very important and accurate data are important for for decision making. We just don't have enough, <coughs> and uh, also data can be interpreted in in, in various ways. Uh, there are pitfalls. Uh, here's a, a, a interesting example. The New York Times has has published some uh, uh, statistics about uh, you know. How many more people die now than maybe in, in other years? This is a data from Switzerland. It really looks terrible. Like if you look at it in other in other countries, it looks really kind of this Corona crisis has really killed a lot a lot of people. Uh, but uh, uh, if you look at it more cl closely, so they compare it with the average of the four last four years. Uh, if you compare it with 2016, which was a bad flu season. So if you look at it, it's actually kind of comparable. The area under the curve is actually even less. <clears throat> That's from, 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 from Switzerland. So uh, of course, this has to be kind of analyzed uh, <clears throat> once things are uh, more clear and then more data are available. And uh, so it, it would be interesting to see how many pe more people have really died in these months than uh, if you compare with other years. Uh, also, uh, data always need to come with sources. I'm actually very mad about the CDC, and I even complained it, uh, there that the uh, you know, raw data are not available, or I mean, hidden, or maybe hidden so well that you cannot find them. So uh, they just essentially have this, you know, the number of uh, cases, the number of deaths. And a good example is from Switzerland, where a programmer has uh, uh, published this. Uh, 
nice graphs. But it's not so much only the pretty, the, the pretty pictures. That's nice. But what is really nice is that all the data are there. You can go to GitHub and you can get all the spreadsheets and everything. You can see who contributed what. And uh, so everything can be traced back to, to the original sources. And so you can make your own uh, statistics and see, see uh, what is right. Uh, beyond calculus, just to the very end, I want to say, I mean, this is not a uh, single variable calculus. This is, of course, not the end of calculus. There is a, a follow-up course, uh, 1B, with series and differential equations. There's also multivariable calculus, linear algebra, probability and statistics. These are all natural things to look at. Uh, here are some topics. I'm not reading them here, but you can look at the syllabi. Uh, and uh, actually, whatever you are doing, whether it's computer science, physics, business, uh, economics, uh, uh, life sciences, or uh, uh, whatever you are doing, these three courses, single variable, multivariable, and linear algebra are extremely important. And then stats, I think, is also nice. And also some programming skills are good. And then come a lot of other math courses, which, uh, which build upon this. And uh, maybe just to uh, finish with a word of wisdom, calculus has its limits. Okay, see you tomorrow in class.